I don't know if you have noticed, Somali pirates who frequently appear in media coverage in the past few years seem to have completely disappeared in recent times. Is it because the Navy ships from various countries have eliminated the pirates? Well, let me tell you the legendary story as to how and why the Somali pirates disappeared. The coast of Somalia is one of the world's busiest shipping routes and the most dangerous seas because pirates are rampant. Getting supplies and ransom from merchant ships seem to be the only reliable way for the extremely poor Somalis to get rich. Pirates show up in groups armed with AK-47s, rocket tubes, and other light weapons. They rob, kidnap, and extort at merchant ships, which seriously affected world trade. In order to deal with this group of sea thieves, the world's navies have been working hard. The United States, NATO, the European Union, Russia, Japan, and other countries had all sent warships to the sea to escort their merchant ships. However, it was difficult to solve the problem by using cannons to shoot mosquitoes. Pirates are not stupid. When they see large warships, they would hide far away. And when they see a single merchant ship, they would then attack. But Kiyoshi Kamaro, a 63-year-old owner of the famous Japanese sushi chain, Sushi Janmai wiped out the Somali pirates with a brilliant plan. Okay, let me explain this brilliant plan to you. The sea off of Somalia is a good fishing ground for high-priced tuna, and Japan is a large consumer of tuna. But in the past, Japanese businessmen stayed away from Somalia because of the rampant piracy. Kiyoshi Kamara, being a successful and wise businessman, had an idea. What if I gave the Somali pirates an offer they couldn't refuse? On the Japanese internet, the conversation between Kiyoshi Kamara and the Somali pirates is spreading. Here's how it goes. Mr. Kimura, Somalia is such a good fishing ground. Why are you being pirates? Pirates. We were also fishermen before, but after the Civil War, we cannot fish. We can only be pirates for a living. Kimura, how about you help me tuna fish? Pirates. We have no fishing boats. Kimura. I can give you boats. Pirates. We don't have the technology to catch tuna either. Kimura. I can teach you that. Pirates. We don't have any cold storage to keep the tuna we catch. Kimura. I will build a cold storage for you. Pirates. We can't export tuna without joining trade organizations. Kimura. I will help you negotiate. Pirates. Then it's a deal. We'll go fish tuna for you. This sounds like a movie plot. In fact, the real story of Kimura and the pirates is very close to this. The harsh natural environment and perennial warfare has made Somalia one of the world's poorest countries. Despite having a long coastline rich with fishing resources, their fishermen's small fishing boats could not compete with the ocean-going fishing vessels from Europe and East Asia. Somalis became ship-robbing pirates as a last option to make a living. Kamora ventured to find someone to arrange a meeting with the pirates. He proposed hiring them to catch tuna offshore. Compared to being pirates and earning money with a gun, it would be much more dignified to work and earn money to support their family. In addition to providing professional boats, fishing equipment, building refrigerating warehouses, and teaching techniques for catching large tuna, Kamora also took the lead in getting Somalia to join the Indian Ocean Tuna Commission which allowed for the export of tuna. He also promised the pirates that he would purchase all the tuna they caught so that their livelihood and market would be insured. Kimura's efforts are evident. According to the International Maritime Bureau statistics, piracy victimization cases in the Somali waters began to plummet since 2011, and by 2015, not a single occurrence was reported. By using force alone, perhaps unsuccessful pirates may want to change careers. But even if they weren't pirates, if no new job opportunities exist, these people will still seek other ways to commit crimes. Kimura's method eradicated the fundamental problem of pirates from the root. Djibouti, Somalia's neighboring country, was so impressed with Kamara's actions that the Djibouti authorities even awarded him a medal to show their appreciation. The story of Somali pirates reminds us that leading a dignified life means having opportunities to generally work hard. Providing people with a way of life that allows them to be self-sufficient is the best way to solve the social problems of poverty and crime. It's like the old adage saying, 
Give a man a fish and you feed him for a day. Show him how to catch fish and you feed him for a lifetime. One day we hope that politicians here in America could lead our country with such wisdom. But unfortunately, this quote from Thomas Sowell better explains American politicians' approach to poverty. Give a man a fish and he will ask for tartar sauce and french fries. Moreover, some politician who wants his vote will declare all these things to be among his basic rights.